Jay here for Stratford Paddock, or according to the racist trolls, VJ Motta here <laughs> for Stratford Paddock. <laughs> this is Paddock Live. Joining me is my old friend, not old, but long time friend, Gaz Drinkwater. How are we doing? Getting old. How, are, how old are you now? 28. We were chatting on the radio before, and I was trying to work out how old you were when not, Pogba signed. Not far off 30 now. I was 21 when Pogba signed, mate, I think. I'll tell you what, it's all downhill from here. How yeah. are things anyway? All right, mate, yeah. yeah. Plodding on. Plodding you know, on. You know, watching United play some turgid football and trying to sound excited about it. The Liverpool game wasn't bad, was it? It was, second half. it was all right, wasn't it? It's it all was, right. It was good. Listen, we're going to get into loads of stories and, and all the latest Manchester United news, including, obviously, about the potential uh, backroom shake-up. So do get involved in the comments and the chat. Make sure, as well, you are hitting that like, share and subscribe button. But me and you was chatting earlier about the Arsenal game last night. Because... Mm. Um, you watched the Arsenal game, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Arsenal played... Seen um, the highlights. Seen the highlights. That's yeah. all you need to see. Yeah. Arsenal played Bayern Munich. They drew, I think it was 2 all in the end. And then, what were we talking about? The penalty, wasn't the it? The penalty. Yeah. Uh, not the Saka one, though. The one that Arsenal gave away, should have gave away. Some yeah, because yeah, yeah, I don't even saw this, right? Everyone was watching the game last night. And I was sort of flicking between that and the City game and then and not watching either when I was getting annoyed. Um, there was an incident where... Is it Gabe, uh, Gabriel's picked up the ball, hasn't it? Well, basically, the goal is put it down for a goal kick. Yeah. The referee's blown his whistle as he's going to take the goal yeah, kick. right. And he's just passed it to, was it Gabriel? Yeah. Yeah. And then Gabriel's just picked the ball up and gone, no, actually, I'm taking the goal yeah. kick. Like, and but, then And then right. Thomas Tuchel's got, right, Thomas Tuchel's kicked off. And after the match, he said, I spoke to the referee by it. And the referee called it a kid's mistake. So he said, I'm not going to give a penalty. In a, in a Champions League quarterfinal for a kid's mistake. Mm. Now, I think that is still a penalty. Because that is a mistake, yes, and it is a childish mistake, but it's still a mistake. You can't pick the ball up Grow when up. you're a defender. Grow up. Grow up. Come on. What is this? Come on, what man. sort of a ring is this? On, oh, he's just made a mistake. What is this? No, look, Under look, sevens. Look, look. Oh, he's only liquid. Look, Leave no. him alone. Look, right. It's a Champions League look. quarterfinal, bro. If you don't know the rules, then I'm sorry. Tough. I get it, right? <laughs> I get by the letter of the law. Yeah. I get it. Right? The rules. It's a penalty. Yes, it I, is. I get it, but. Right. Come on, like it's, well, obvi- it's obvious what it makes no difference. Like it doesn't. Like, it's not like him doing that takes away any more opportunities for the other team. It does make not, a difference. So it, it gives us the greatest moment in football, Twitter. Now that I that, can get on board with. Because the meltdown from the Arsenal fans and the shade and fraud, whatever you call it, from all the non-Arsenal fans would have been biblical. Imagine if they'd have got knocked out. It would have been very. Funny. If he's picked it up. It's a penalty, and he probably gets sent also, off. Also, by as the well. way, I do wish it was a penalty. Know, like, I, I, don't get me wrong; I wish it was a penalty. But I'm just saying, if we did that, I would have been like, "That's so annoying." Would you have appealed for it if you was playing against him? Of course, I would. I'd have been going berserk. Of course, I I'd would. have been going. I'd have been probably chucked out of the stadium for oh, losing yeah. my rag too much because I'd be like, "Oh my god, we're being robbed and all that." It would have been funny, but also he's proper thick to do that. Like that is just stupid, isn't it? You've heard the whistle. Right, you know the whistle's gone, but you're like, I'll risk it anyway. For what? You haven't achieving anything. Well, that's what I mean. He's not achieving anything. Like, that's why I'm not like, bothered about that it. Risk. Well, that's so know. crazy. It would have been so funny. Oh, mate, I so wish you'd given him I'm not even that bothered, but it just for the, for the absolute hilarity the that would have ensued, would have the memes would have been unreal. Um, oh, Vicky Witterbird is in the chat. Gifted five Stretford Paddock memberships. Big thank you to Vicky. She's always gifting membership, man. She's a big supporter of the channel. And we do appreciate that. Without our members, we wouldn't be here. Uh, go and check out the members section as well if, if you pick up one of those memberships that Vicky's just gifted. Uh, got some extra content. We're actually chatting to, uh, funnily enough, the Mumbai um, Supporters Club. They were on the um, on the channel the other day. So go and check them out. Uh, what stories have we got anyway? What's what's the first one? Okay. Oh, I can see right. what I can so see what the done first there. Pun, it's an easy one. Gaz, what are you thinking it's of an that? E- it's, an, it's an easy one, but I'll allow it. Like, Ratcliffe's bold move, yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Bold move, yeah. Yeah. Um, so apparently Ten Hag could remain at United next season. This is despite failing to convince the club's board that he's the right man. Uh, Dave Brailsford conducting an audit of the club and is the most hands-on of the Ineos personnel involved with the club. A failure to qualify for the Champions League will tighten further the strict financial restrictions on the club. The short-term feeling is that Ten Hag has not done enough to convince the club's board that he is the man to take them forward. Ratcliffe will delegate a decision over Ten Hag's future to Ashworth and Wilcox. Interesting. And he would rather not sack a manager during his first summer at the club. But as well as the financial compensation it would take to fire Ten Hag, there is another problem in that there's a shortage of top-class managers available. Do you agree with any of that? 
Uh, I agree about the shortage of top class managers available. Um, I agree that Sir Jim Ratcliffe would not like, he would, that's not what he wants to do. Mm. He, um, I, I also agree that I would, I, I would be curious, I wouldn't say I'd like to, I'd be curious to see how Ten Hag does next season and how United are after the summer with an actual proper, you know, a proper unit in place mm. behind the scenes. On the other hand, has he done enough to convince them that he should stay? No. If it's up Not to you, me. you've got a magic wand. Oh, don't ask me this. Bro, come on. We've all got to do it. Oh. I do it every day. And, and you've got... It's, it's July the 30th. Right. And Sir Jim's come over to you and he's gone, listen, guys, I love your radio show. Listen to it all the time. Mm. You're the guy that knows his onions, right? <laughs> yeah. He's not been listening then. <laughs> he's yeah. not been listening. He's lying. He's yeah. lying. Right, okay. Right. He's uh, just... I don't know what to do. We're running with the, the border split. We mm. can't make our, our minds up. It's up to you, bro. You've got your finger on the pulse. Should we pull the have trigger? Have United won the FA Cup? That is a very good question. All right. Yeah, they have. Oh, yeah, yeah, he stays. Yeah, good lad. No, I'm yeah, on yeah, that. No, I'm on that bus. He stays, yeah. Back to back trophies, the man stays. You can't, yeah. Yeah, he stays. stop City winning a, yeah. another also, FA but, Cup. Also, if he do not win the FA Cup and he finishes sixth, that's where I've got an headache. Yeah, then you've got a. If he finishes a below six, see you later, lad. Yeah, yeah. You know, back to Ajax. Yeah. That's where we'll. I think that's what's going to happen in the summer, bad. Yeah, they've had a right horror right. show since he left there, haven't they? But after. It was after the Chelsea game I tweeted, I think it's over for Ten Hag at Man United. Uh, and I was very emotional after the Chelsea game, so it was one of them emotional tweets that I almost thought about deleting later. But then yeah. I thought, no, you know what? I don't think he's done enough to convince these lot. I think they will get rid of him. Was that his... Was the Chelsea game his... It's not even his fault, really. Was Chelsea it game. his severe for Jose or his... For me, it was Aston Villa with Ole. That game where you go, this ain't going to work out. It's more... Was that for you, that more, how you felt? You know how I felt? It's when I was sat in the press conference after. Yeah. We sat down and we went, we dominated the game. And I went, you can't concede 28 shots in a game yeah. and concede four goals yeah. and dominate a game of football. I, I hear that. I, hear, I, don't think he, I don't think he does himself many favours in press conferences. No. I've been in some of his press conferences. I've done like press conferences before where certain managers can get the press on board with the way they are. Mm. They can be a bit sort of jovial or Postacoglu is the one I always refer to because mm. he's like one of the lads and people like him. He calls Says everyone mate. mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's a bit blunt, but yeah. in a good way yeah, without yeah, being yeah. sort of mo uh, moody. Tanag, he's just a bit distant at times. Mm. There's not really that connection between him and the press and, and I think that hurts him. And also that, that you, when you talk about that lack of maybe charisma a yeah. little bit. Yeah, no, 100%. That's why I think like, you know what people are saying at the end of the Chelsea game, you can see him on the sidelines telling everyone to calm down. I'm almost like, yeah, but it's one thing telling everyone to calm down, but maybe they just don't respond to you. Maybe yeah. you're saying the right things, yeah. but you've not got that charisma about you that people are going to respond to. It's my theory why Scottish managers are so successful in England, because I think their accent works the most really? in, in inspiring people. Do you think? I, gen I genuinely think that's part of it. I genuinely think that's part of it. It's not that Matt Busby and Sir Alex Ferguson were geniuses. Absolute it's geniuses. It's the accent. No, absolute geniuses. What I'm yeah. saying is... An English manager's never won the Premier League, you know what I mean? Like, I'm saying that Scottish managers, too many of them have been too good, is what I'm saying. There's something else there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, no offence to the Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about the Dutch? But like, I don't um, know, I just don't find him that inspiring sometimes. Dutch, He's a really nice guy Dutch, though. A Dutch manager's got a good record in the Premier League. Not to be all like Brexit and say every Dutch manager is the same, obviously they're all di di different. But like there was Van Gaal and we obviously have had Ten Hag United. De Boer had a shocker, didn't he, at Palace. Mm. Who else has there been who's been a... Gus Hidden, yeah, he did well at Chelsea, didn't he? Yeah. He was their go-to caretaker, one not I think mm. he won the FA Cup. When he came in, like at one point, and he, he steadied the ship after a couple. I think he went in back there twice. Actually, I might be wrong, um, but he, he certainly seemed like a, a safe pair of hands. It's a shame about Hullet was that. a. Oh, oh, you should know that, producer Ethan. I was Hullet at Newcastle. Four went time, but he dropped both of them. No, not not very. Didn't he? Didn't he drop Shearer for one of the games? Yeah, that was a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that that'll work well. <laughs> that'll get the fans on board, and, and that'll convince the dressing room to buy into your tactics. Yeah. I'm just going to drop our record goal scorer. When he's still in his prime. Yeah, nice one. It's a shame though, like, because I, li I like the guy. I like Ten Hag. He's a nice guy. I remember um, earlier in the season, like, because usually I'm at the press conferences for Radio Manchester, but at Spurs away, they put you in a little separate room and it's like you and one other reporter. No. And the manager comes in, you're chatting to him one on one. Oh, that's good. And, but the, the press guy literally brought him in the room and the press guy, all he said was, This is Gaz Radio Manchester, dead quick. And he shut my hand and that was it. Then half an hour later, I'm walking out the stadium, walking down a corridor, and Ten Hag's walking the other way. 
And Ted Hodge was just like, ah, Gaz, see you next yeah. time, eh? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Why, has he, why has he remembered my name? He didn't have to do that. So little things yeah. like that. I think he's a nice bloke. I just maybe don't think that charisma's there. No, we spoke to him a couple of times in the press conferences on pre-season. That's the best time to speak to any manager because one, the first time we did it was his first summer. So he had no clean slate. No mm. one's judging him. It's all quite jovial. New manager coming in, excited. He said all the right things. There was no dramas. The second time, he'd had a good first season. So again, pretty relaxed. Everyone's you know, quite jovial. Mm. He was pretty warm and chilled. Plus, when it's pre-season, it's slightly different because before the presser, like they'll be giving a shirt to yeah. the groundsman from the, yeah, the stadium. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna, yeah, yeah. you know, play out or whatever. It's not like a normal press conference where there's an edge of seriousness yeah, there. Yeah. Or, People trying to catch him out. Yeah, it's a like bit that. more like, oh, you know, like la di da. So it, it was a, a good environment environment for him, but he came across quite well. And I do feel a little bit sorry for for managers at United because. Like you were saying there about the new structure and everything, they're coming into this mess, because it's been a mess, hasn't it, with the Glazers and everything. You're coming into that. Mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. The last 18 years have been the best nine, nine years, been the best nine years of our lives. Um, coming into all this, you've got all that going on, the expectation, then you've got a lot of the press who want to catch you out, who don't like you, then you've got all the sort of other stuff that goes on the social media stuff and all that lot. So it can be quite difficult, but um, I just, yeah, sometimes I just feel there's a little bit of lack of connection uh, between. The, the press and Eric Tenag. Well, I'll tell you what, there isn't a lack of connection with, and that's with Manscaped, yes, because they have led the way in below the waist grooming technology, yeah, where other people don't even dare to dream, they dare to make it a reality. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, look, Jay, we've heard all about the performance package 4.0, yeah, bore off. Well, no, I'm here to tell you about the Ultra 5.0. Yes, Manscaped have gone that step further and they've got the performance package Ultra 5.0 and that is unreal but I know what you're thinking you're thinking oh my god that's amazing but what about all the things we know that is what I was thinking yeah because you like your crop pro, uh, crop pro no that's not a word you like your crop uh, preserver your ball toner of your, your shed travel bag to put it in your weed Absolutely. whacker because you, well, how old did you say you were 28 you get into that age where nose and don't hair. tell me this it, 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 the, the bad news is that's going to happen the good news is Manscaped's got you covered good. with the weed whacker yeah Thank so you've God. got all that you can put all that in your shed travel bag I know what you're thinking oh post and packaging don't worry about that we've got that covered yeah all right. also don't worry about it though because it's 20% off yeah there's a link in the description using the code devils20 Yes, <laughs> using the code Devils20, you get free shipping, you get 20% off, so you don't have to worry about anything, you don't have to worry about your nose and your hair, you don't have to worry about looking a little bit rough down there. Below the waist grooming technology is taking a leap forward and you need to get on board with it. Get the performance package 5.0 Ultra, links in the description, your balls will thank you. Big thank you to Manscapes as well for sponsoring this podcast. If, you, if you're lucky, many people will thank you. Yes, and nice. Yeah. If, you use Manscapes, if you use Manscapes, many people will thank they, you. They will, and me and Gaz will be the first ones. Speak for yourself. All right, then I'll be the first one. <laughs> um, I mean, Verma says, Evening Gaz and VJ Motti. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Anyone who's wondering why I'm called VJ Motti, a bit of racist trolling that I had earlier. Someone saying I should be called VJ Motti. And I had a go with Adam McCora as well. Why, so, did they, yeah. why did they say that you should be called VJ Motti? I don't know what, I don't know what the reference is. I don't get is. it. What were they saying? I don't know. I think it might, I mean, it might be some racism because we interviewed the Mumbai Supporters Club. I don't, I don't know. But they had a go with Adam McCola and me and it was just, just sort of, racist nonsense and then they said you should be calling yourself VJ Motti and Adam really, McCullough should be calling himself something else. Is it because uh, of that really strong Indian accent that you have? I don't know and it, it was just you know it was amusing for not the reasons they thought no, it was just it, like you know I'm, it's amazed, one of them, I'm like, amazed they could string a sentence together but I found it quite It's funny. one of them we're laughing at how stupid they are because it's just morons <laughs> but you know Bring it um, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go into some of the chat before we go into the next um, next story. Loads of people in the chat. Make sure you are hitting that like button as well, please, people. Um, I've already mentioned Whitbird, Vicky, sponsor, uh, sending over some um, free membership. Also, Aaron Agnew has gifted a Stratford Park membership. A lot, a lot, <coughs> a lot of generosity going in. Uh, great to see that. Big thank you to everyone who's been doing that. Uh, Martial says, Gaz, love out, love out. So you've got a fan there. Um, Lucky Singh says, you have to hey, give mate. Eric Tanag more time. You do, sort of. We'll see where we end up. Uh, what's the next one? It's better be a good pun. Yeah, the first one was like a sort of steady one. It's all right. Is it? To be frank, Benny, you're out. Remind me. 
Nice. It took me a second. Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't look. Thank you, Benny. Right, okay. So have you put him in that? Yeah, obviously. He's not walking. <laughs> for a minute, have you, have you for a minute, him? I was like, did he do a sponsorship for Frankie and Benny's or something? Because that's a well good Photoshop. That looks well real. I'm glad you. I'm glad you explained that question. I'm, I'm you, that guy. Did you put him in that? I'm that guy who yes, posts AI did. videos no, online. He's had me over real. a few times. He, he put a picture of him. Who was it? He put a picture of the other week. When I, the young, he put the wrong Diongo. Yeah, oh, I yeah. dragged him out, and then he just it was it was a joke. Glad. So he showed me up. But yeah, they they put him. He doesn't. He, has, he doesn't really right, work. Go for Frankie good, and good, 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 good. Uh, Go on, read it out then. Anyway. Um, so Benny McCarthy facing an uncertain future with his contract set to expire in the summer. So Dave Brailsford is conducting an audit of the club. We've already mentioned that. Uh, he, he's the most hands-on yet. We've already mentioned that uh, failure to. In fact, I think that that's exactly the same description that we've just read from the last piece. But the actual. <laughs> The producers are having an absolute Have you just cracking time today. Is that the cracking same thing? Time. That is the same description from the Eric Ten Hag thing that we Go were just talking about. Go back to the about. last one. And it's nothing to do with Benny McCarthy. But the suggestion oh, is right, that Benny McCarthy... Minute. The short-term feeling is that Ten Hag has not done enough to convince... What's going on here? <laughs> the, the, it's from the same the, article, the, 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 so we've got the, the, confused. The, 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 because the, 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 our oh, there it is. Can't it is. possibly cope okay, with you know different paragraphs and words and sentences in the same article. That'd be just too much to, to handle. Disregard that. Uh, disregard that. Yeah, I'm gonna just answer, can I just apologise, Gaz? Okay. Gaz has come on here, right? He's a staple of Full Time Devils. He's a very experienced journalist. Do you know what I mean? Journalist. He's, he's a world famous commentator. Yeah, he went viral after the Liverpool game. I don't know if you heard about that, but it was a thing. I told everyone. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> and he comes on here. And this is the shambles he's got to deal with. I'm sorry about this, guys. To be honest, Honestly, I, I, I'm did outraged. Think, I did think the standards would be better. I'm, outra I'm and, outraged. And, I think and, 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 and Ethan, I think you need to apologise to Gaz, please. The, I don't, do you mean that? The story's here. The story's here, right. Well, we'll read it off there then. All right. Benny McCarthy. Nothing to do with Ten Hag. He's facing an uncertain hey, future. You'd be calling him of... Quentin Fortune now. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> he's facing an uncertain future as part of Man United's coaching staff with the former South Africa striker's contract set to expire in the summer. McCarthy arrived at Old Trafford as part of Eric Ten Hag's coaching team July 2022. He's 46 years old, hugely popular figure among players and staff. But sources have told ESPN that he has not been approached by the club about signing a new deal. It means the former Porto and Blackburn striker, who has had responsibility for looking after United's forwards, could be on his way out at the end of the season. If he leaves, McCarthy, who was credited with helping Marcus Rashford score 30 goals last season, has ambitions of returning to management after spells in charge of Cape Town City and Amazulu in South Africa. Um, it's an interesting one, this, isn't it? Because it's weird with coaches and stuff. Because you remember like when Kieran McKenna was at Old Trafford and things started going wrong for Owe? And loads of fans decided that Kieran McKenna was the reason that everything was going wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why have we got Kieran McKenna? What does he know about football? Why is he one of the coaches? He's shit. Get yeah. rid of him. Yeah. And now he's smashing, smashing it. it. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, actually, maybe he was really good at his job. Kieran uh, McKenna, Michael Carrick. Yeah, LA. yeah, like, Michael Carrick's another one. Yeah. What does he know about football? Yeah, he's only won the lot and was one yeah. of the most intelligent players you've ever I seen. I a story about Michael Carrick. Dad, Please quick. do. I love so, um, so uh, I was uh, getting levered in Cheadle Village recently with my brother. Oh, wow, the old half uh, lived. And we went. <laughs> <laughs> we went in a takeaway at the end of the night about two o'clock in the morning yeah. and we went oh boss man in the takeaway we were like right chicken burger and chips and all that Love and then that. we started so he's like do you like football and they were like yeah yeah of course I like football I was like right we're having a debate uh, give us the top three strikers in the Premier League ever uh, top three midfielders in the Premier League ever and I'm thinking he's going to go oh Steven Gerrard Frank mm -hmm. Lampard Paul Scholes or something and he just literally goes well Michael Carrick I mean my brother went oh Oh my God, this guy, he knows ball. We were levered as well, so yeah. we were like, this guy, you're my best mate, I love you. We went home and watched like 50 minutes of Michael Carrick highlights. It was fucking men. I love it when we were doing something like a few months ago on here, and Steve, like, you know what Steve Allison's like, when he gets something, he'll, he'll do, just doubles down on anything, never never backs down. And he went, um, he said, he was listening to top his top midfielders mm. and he were he's he's like like skulls mm. keen mm. and he said third best premier league midfielder ever michael carrick <laughs> it's like 
loads of Liverpool fans on him. Oh, there's no way he's better than Gerard. He's, uh, he's like, yes, better than Gerard. Uh, or, sorry, he didn't say he's the best ever. He just said he was better than Gerard. And Liverpool fans went for him. Don't disagree with him. But do not disagree with him. Let's put it this way. If Michael Carrick had been playing for Liverpool in 2014, they would have won the title. Exactly. He wouldn't have slipped and give it to Denver Bar. Uh, loads of people in the chat. What do you reckon of Benny McCarthy? Because the point I was making earlier, he gets that credit for Manchester's 30 goal season. Does he get the blame for Marcus not scoring this season? How does it work? I look. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know exactly what influence Benny McCarthy is having on these strikers day in day out. No. One thing I do know, as it says there, not yeah. there, not there, because he's talking about Edits and yeah. I again. As it says there, um, everyone loves him. Everyone yeah. likes him. And look, <laughs> and look, and I do think that that should be relevant. Though I don't know how good he is at his job, but yeah. if he brings good vibes and he puts smiles on the players' faces every day. That's a good thing. But if he's shit at his job, yeah, fair enough. And you I don't just know. don't know, do you? I, don't I know. think that's the thing with coaches, unless you're a player or a manager or a coach at Manchester United Football Club, you don't really know. And it's easy just to assume, oh, Benny McCarthy's responsible for Marcus Rashford's 30 goals. Mm. But actually, you don't really know. I love the fact as well, Ethan, you've gone all out on this picture and done a really, really <laughs> so good he spent job. spent all his time he's doing it. And then the, the <laughs> text is completely wrong. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to the next one. See if you can redeem yourself. Wait, it's going to be the same thing this, again. This you watch. The same one. It's right. not. Eds it's not. Roll. It's not. Go on. Um, <laughs> Jim salivates for old lady toffee. <laughs> 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 There's an image in my head that I didn't need in my head. I really didn't need it. What were you two like? Little two little naughty schoolboys whispering to each other. There. Who came up with that one? Adam, I knew you was blaming each other. Jim salivates for old lady toffee. Right. What's the old lady reference? Is it? Is there? A, is there, I can see the Jared Branthwaite thing. Right. Okay. Oh yeah, there is a Juventus right. thing there. All right. uh, so United apparently have plans to bring in two big name stars to fix their defensive issues this summer. Uh, United's top target is Jared Branthwaite of Everton, with the Toffees' financial troubles well documented. It's believed they will likely have to consider the sale of at least one big name player this summer. As a result, Everton are placing a minimum £75 million fee on the defender's head, a price that Ratcliffe is reportedly willing to meet. He is not the, he is not the only defender on their radar either, with United's new sporting director, Dan Ashworth, also reportedly pushing the club towards the capture of Juventus defender Gleason Bremer too. Brazilian is one of the most feared centre-halves in Serie A and has a clause that allows him to leave for 60 million euros, 50 million quid, in summer 2025. <laughs> What's that? Oh. He's, one, he's one of the most feared centre-halves <laughs> in Serie A. How do you know? Have you <laughs> fucking measured that, have we? Have you got some stat that can show me that everyone has more fear they when they the face Bremer? Yeah. yeah. Like, who's the one, one you're scared of the most, Bremer? Yeah, Easy. 100%. Yeah, Easy. we've got the stats here. That's just a completely made-up sentence, yeah. isn't it? No, I think, yeah, Juventus, um, obviously Everton. What, what do you reckon of the, the poem, guys? What are you giving it? Uh, I, I, it's the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life, so I'm, I'm not, I want to give it a zero, to be honest. What? It's, wow. you know, no, well, it's a good pun. I, I, it's just made me feel physically sick, so, you know. Sorry, lads. Gaz is the guest. He gets to choose. Um, we've spoke about Gleason Bremer before, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. um, so forget about him. Jared Branthwaite, what do you think about him? Oh, he looks good, doesn't he? He, does. he looks really good. He looks really commanding. He, he looks quite intelligent a, as a centre-back He stinks of a Pep Guardiola sign in it. Yeah, well, that's it. Mm. That's it. Um, I'd love him. I would absolutely love him. It's just 75 million quid. That's all it is. And I know it's not my money. I'm not asked what United pay for a player, really. But I'm just worried about them big fees for these big names just because they're playing in England. And I'm, not, I'm not saying that he's not going to be good if he comes United. But if he comes, then you know, people say that, oh, it's just Sir Jim Ratcliffe wanting to bring in these uh, these players in this country and if you can get someone for a bit cheaper and maybe would go that way rather than getting someone young and unproven especially a centre back it's cheeky Everton man we gave him James Garner on a budget price deal they should do the same for us with Bramthwaite that's how it should work um, yeah it does worry me the, the prices you, as you mentioned there Gleeson Bremer a lot of people talking about him seems to be doing really well in Syria. obviously he's the most feared centre half according to yeah. the team talk uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I'm scared of old lady toffee. Oh, mate, honestly, he's absolutely disgusting, you lot. Um, right, let's talk about something less gross. Uh, go on, give us the next one. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> you do know this is sponsored, don't you? <laughs> okay. 
To be you know fair, I mean? right? Someone's paying money to sponsor their products on this channel. Mate, I can't on even, this podcast. I can't even mock this. And so far, we've got old lady Toffee, someone salivating over it, and this utter filth. Go on. I love to see him start in, in that Liverpool game, though. Because usually Ten Hag gets his willy out like towards the end of a game, doesn't he? And it's good to see him start a game with his willy out. Um, but this is about United's big willy protection. <laughs> yeah, United's defensive injury crisis. So big willy Cambuala thrust into the. You're not making it worse. <laughs> oh my god! Do you know what? It's a good job this is on after ten o'clock at anyway. night. Because off com, if that was a thing for us, it'd be all over us. Mate, I said it at 6 pm on the radio, don't worry about oh it. Oh my god. Uh, thrust, I hope my boss isn't watching, that didn't happen. We're made, making no, it all for comedic effect. Um, thrust into the first team for the clash against Liverpool. Cambuala's standout performance could see him sign a bumper new contract. Oh, Cambuala has impressed United coaches who are thought to be prioritising a new deal for the youngster. Sources state that Cambuala is very happy at Old Trafford at present, being delighted at joining the first team squad since making his first bench appearance in the festive period and having featured in six six games since. With his first start coming against West Ham on December the 23rd, his current deal expires at the end of next season and club chiefs are ready to offer him a new long-term deal as a result of his impressive rise from youth football to the Premier League. Right. I love him. I love him. I mean, should we be giving him a, a new deal? Already? It's not going to be a mad new deal though, is yeah. it? We're not going to be giving him like, this This isn't one of those situations where we're going to be all of a sudden bumping his price up by a ridiculous amount, no. surely not. Um, You'd like to think that. But I, I get why we would. I think I've seen enough now that I would like Willie Cambuala playing the Johnny Evans role next season. Can I play devil's advocate? Of course. I like him. I thought he had a very good game against Liverpool. But? I remember Paddy McNair having a man of the match debut against, I know it was against West Ham or QPR, I was getting mixed up. But he had a very, very good start to his, his United career. I think he was 18, 19 years old. We were all certain there's a kid who's going to play for United for the next 10 years. I think Willie Cambuala is a very good defender. I think he's better than Paddy McNair. And I think he'll have a very, very bright future. I don't think there's anything wrong with waiting a little bit before we... I sat, might be being swayed by the fact that he loves United. Really? Like that video of him that I saw the other yeah. day, I've seen that interview where he's like, all he ever was was United. Yeah. I wasn't even bothered about watching I know it's quite it different United. as well because United have gone and got him. Like sort of, you know, he's obviously one of the most raved about young defenders, um, I think, in, in in the world, you could argue at one point. Like, in terms of the young defenders, there was there was always a lot of hype around him. He's coming to the first team, he's done really well. I just think, you know, you do need to be a little bit careful because sometimes it can be a bit like Adnan Yanazai. He's the greatest thing you've ever oh, seen. Oh yeah, I'm not saying that. Yeah, no, I'm not, you, I know you're not. Yeah, yeah. I'm just erring on the side of caution. I'm just saying, like, if next season he played for example, the games... Right, like Johnny Evans has played too many games this season. No mm. one expected Johnny Evans to play this many yeah. games. I don't think he expected it. Next season, hopefully, we won't have an absolute mad injury crisis yeah. constantly. And Willie Cambuala can play as that fifth-choice centre-back, because I do think you need a fifth-choice right. centre-back. Well, what's your, your, give us your pecking order in the United oh, Defenders God. Club. Well, cause, no, because there's going to be a few of them that go, aren't there? All right, 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 now, Lind right, now, right now. Right now. Who's your, what's your pecking order? It's hard, isn't it? Because it's got to be, obviously, Martinez as number one. Martinez number one. And then, um, I mean, it's Varane two still. It Varane, is Varane yeah. two. Right? And, then, and then it's Maguire. Maguire. And then it's, it's, it's going to have to be Lindelof after that, isn't it? Is it? Why are you saying? I'd Johnny say, above Lindelof. if everyone's fit, if everyone's fit, I'd rather see Luke Short left centre back than Oh, no, all right, yeah. I'm not. Right, personally, I'm, yeah. You, no, you're right. No, mate, yeah. mate, I'd put, if, that, if, they, if we're yeah. doing that, Luke Short's above Harry Maguire. Okay, yeah. If, if we're doing that, Luke Short's yeah, above yeah. Harry Maguire. Yeah, um, yeah then Lindelof, yeah. Uh, uh, Johnny Evans, Willie Campbell. See, I might be being harsh on Lindelof. I'd put him down a pecking order, mate. Wow. I, would. I, don't, I don't really. Yeah, I think he's I, off this I, summer anyway. I'd probably put Lindelof at the bottom, but that's just me. I don't hate on the guy. I just, I just don't think he's at level. Don't trust a good looking centre half. No, no. <laughs> Don't trust him. You want an ugly centre half yeah. who's going to, I'm not saying they're all ugly, but yeah. you want someone who's a bit like, you know what I mean, looks like a, the good thing about Steve Bruce, he looks at his face, right? I yeah. love Steve Bruce, but you could tell he'd been in battles. Yeah, exactly. You could tell he'd put his face where you shouldn't be putting your face, yeah. like in people's boots. And that's what you want from a centre half. <laughs> like no an old lady toffee. Yeah, like an old lady toffee <laughs> that you salivate over in between getting your big willy thrust into some filth. Yes. So you've dragged me down your level now. Where, uh, but on, kids. Wear protection. Kids. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Listen to don't Uncle Gaz. Right, Wear protection. About. Right, go on, give us the, the next one. Oh, oh I'm dreading this. Oh, it, it, oh okay, it's all right. It's, Very good, this. It's Very got good. even worse. Safe, safe pun. I was worried. I thought they're going worse here. There's going to be some <coughs> right nonsense here. Go on. So uh, apparently Man United are monitoring a pair of fresh injury concerns ahead of the trip to Bournemouth. Doesn't it sound like, like it's a transfer target? 
we're like we're monitoring a fresh pair. Like we're after some injuries. <laughs> we've got our eye on some fresh injuries here. United are keeping United are scouting some injuries we've not had yet, and we're hoping to bring them in over the next two months. I'm pretty sure we've had every injury yeah, yeah. to be fair this season. <laughs> that's, how it's, that's how it feels, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, this is uh, Scott McTominay following the two-all draw with Liverpool. Rashford was taken off during the second half, and Scott McTominay missed out altogether. Uh, on the extent of Rashford's injury, Ten Hag said, "I'm not sure, but I don't think it will be long term." While McTominay has been added to an extensive injury list. That's what United confirmed. Casemiro did make the game after a knock the previous week, but Rafa Alvaran and Johnny Evans have set for a continued absence. They joined the likes of Martinez and Shaw, you know, hoping for a return before the season's end. So very vague, isn't it, really? Yeah. As to I mean, what is going on. And you, you worry, don't you, because some big games coming up. Obviously, the FA Cup, like you was mentioning earlier, you want these players back for the final, if we get there, which you'd like to think we would with Coventry in the semi-final, with all disrespect to them. So yeah, I'd love to see the likes of Martinez and Shaw back for that one. And hopefully Marcus isn't too serious. I also feel for Marcus, I know everyone's sort of on his case, but if he wants to go to the Euros, he's got to do something towards he's the end of the season. He needs, to, he needs at least to score, I don't know, three or four goals. Because I think he's falling down the pecking order there. And I, I think he's. I think at the minute, as things stands, he's not on the plane. Can, can I? Uh, no, well, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I think, think he's, he's got to get himself back on I it. think as things stand, he is on the plane. Oh, you do? But, right, okay. But... I'm not saying he's confirmed. I'm, like, right, okay. I'm not saying that. That'll the thing is, is, as well, like there's talking that it's like there's, there's him or Grealish or Gordon, hmm. and Grealish has got like Champions League game. He can he played shine well as well yeah. last night. So if he's shining against Real Madrid, hmm. he's getting himself in Gareth Southgate's mind. Hmm. You know, Marcus Rashford. You know, even a good performance against Coventry City doesn't necessarily make you good enough to go to the Euros. I think he needs to do something in the league as well. And what have we got, six, seven games left, whatever it is, he's not many. I'll tell you what does me head in as well about uh, City fans, just out of the blue. Uh, how, how long have we got? You know, go like, on. They talk about Rodri like, going unbeaten for all this time. Yeah. You know, he's not unbeaten for that long, because Scotland beat Spain. Well, So said. Rodri can deal with well, anyone, said. apart from big Scotty Mac. <laughs> nice. That's it. I love that. No, uh, hey, no, I'm just saying. A little bit of facts for you there, saying. City fans. Actually, yeah, you like Arsenal with that invincible season where they lost six times. It, it was over a year ago, but still, like, it, like, still it, 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 it still counts. Hey, but, hey. but, and, and another thing, right? I'm not here to slag Man United fans off. In fact, I'm not. That's the opposite of what still, I'm doing. That's not how it works on this channel. United fans Anymore. slag us off. <laughs> we don't slag them off. But, Right, there's what? one or two. You know when you see these Twitter morons that don't even feel like real people? Yeah. I saw some gimp on Twitter before. Yeah. Cheer, like, celebrating because McTominay was injured. I hate that. Like, look, if you don't like a player, fair enough. If you don't want a player to play, fair enough. Like, say, I, I hope he's not starting. Oh, I'm glad he's not starting. I Great. It, it, to, 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 to celebrate one of your own being injured. It's performative, innit? I saw some guy, in, and it showed, I've seen him before, and I, I think it's some sort of, like, act. And he was sat in a uh, United yeah. top celebrating Diaz's goal. Like, yes, because this is going to get Eric Tanak sat. It's not real. Right? It's, it's not real. Play. It's, not, it's attention morons. seeking. It's, you're not a United fan who celebrates Liverpool scoring against you because you want your money to get sat. That's just nonsense. And I sort of get annoyed with myself for even bringing it up. Yeah, exactly, because uh, it's not real, is it? Hit that like button, people. I'm going to go through some of the uh, quotes quickly. Uh, sorry, the comments quickly. Vicky, Vicky Bird, no, let's try again. Witterbird, Vicky says, I believe Amrabat was around for pre-season. He would have been better. I think there's a bit of a discussion going on there. Stephanie Griffiths says, 1,300 watching, not even 200 likes. Well pointed out there. Um, I think there's a bit of a chat going on about um, Amrabat. Patrick Foskin says, questions over our medical staff. Yeah, I mean, again, it feels a little bit like the whole um, thing with the coaches, isn't it? Is it the medical staff's problem? Is it the, the, the manager? Is it just the players? Is it luck? Is it, what is it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? You don't really know, None do of us you? Know. you don't know. There's certain things you can go, well, could we handle that better or whatever? But in the grand scheme of things, you just don't really know. I just know that one thing I'm certain of is we've missed far too many players this season. Uh, a big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this podcast Go and check out the link in the description using the code DEVILS20. Get 20% off and free shipping. Go and get the Ultra 5.0 package. Gaz, it is always a pleasure, my brother. Lovely, um, Where can people find you? Give your show a little plug. Uh, BBC Radio Manchester. Um, we are on 6 until 7pm. You can get us on BBC Sounds on the app. Uh, you can always call in as well, no matter where you are from. We'd love to hear from you. 0800 218 2255. We talk all things sport in Greater Manchester. Um, and also, you know, if you're driving about, United are playing, and you just want to check what the score is, 
Stick Radio Manchester on, you'll hear me doing the United updates. And then when it's the FA Cup, I'll be doing full commentary as well. So enjoy. Yeah, get involved, man. Get on the phone, ring up. I, yeah. like, not enough writer fans ring up sometimes. Because sometimes I hear City fans on there. Yeah, well, that's what, that's I can't, what's going on there. Well, what it is, is because we have we do the City commentary for the Premier League games, yeah. but we don't have the rights to the Man United commentary because oh, it's too expensive, typical, isn't it? Typical, typical. Uh, so uh, so that's, that's what the annoying thing is. So more City fans now. Right, well, we need listen. to sort out. So, right, right, so get, get in there, ring yeah. up, make sure you... Uh, Come on. Give Gaz uh, some United fans to chat to. Uh, Aaron Moore has been a member of the Academy for three months. Says, what's the crack, lads? Good to see Gaz back. Like the full-time Devils days. It is indeed. He's going to be back again very soon. That's, biz Gaz. That's been Gaz Stringwater. I've been VJ Motty, according <laughs> to the racist Charles. This has been Paddock Live. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.